शुक्र थोड़ा भी शुक्र asking for Mulana Sheikh to grant us something that we need. Everyone needs something different. So what you need, what he needs, what he needs, what she needs, he needs, she needs, and the others, big ones and small ones, different things. Can't give a talk coming to each point. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 20, 30 points. No one can carry it. So, Grand Sheikh would give everything to his talk. It would be something for everyone at their levels without making a special course in each thing. You see, I want you to do a course on the Quran reciting or Sharia or no. Speak. It was like a fountain, Sheikh Abdullah. When you start, when you say, he would talk, he would start speaking. People would come, the tired go, new ones would come, continue showering. Told the story. Remember Sheikh Anwar? To meet him. Who else? Well, two or three famous ones in Damascus. They were sitting, and Grand Sheikh was pouring tea. Drink, drink. Talking, they became hypnotized. They were done with each one of the bottle. All of a sudden, I say, you know. Unusual people. From the time he was small. How old were you? Yeah, when he was your age, 12 or 13. Already <coughs> he was able to read people's minds, uh, tell them what to uh, advise, what to do. How? He was given that from when he was a child. Others that have to work for it, study. The shape was Rabani, Kuru Rabani, take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without study. Take from these Chayet, Kuyudat, heavenly showering. It's a showering you can't see it. When your words, like in school, oh, students, the coefficient of 45 is 39 divided by 18 is 15. And 1805, George Washington climbed the Empire State Building and went and drew his sword. Studying. They were giving without studying, coming to them in a way no one knows how it works. Rabbani, Kuru Rabbani, says Holy Father. Rabbani. Sheikh Nazim, he famously closed the Tariqat in October 2010. I think Javar was there. He said, no more Naqshbandi, no more Chisti, no more Khadri, no more Shazali. Uno Rabbani. Try to be someone who takes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Takes from his lights. Allah grant us. Allah grant us. You can't study for that. Don't know. Sayyid Nakhudr, for instance, he was Rabbani. How he, how he became Rabbani? He was in an army. Sayyidina Khadr was in an ancient army and they were surrounded, trapped by the enemy. They had no water, no supplies. And he sacrificed himself to find water for the others. He exposed himself, he was going everywhere looking. 
he forgot his own safety. And finally, he found a spring, fell into that spring, it was the water of life. He was looking for water for his brothers. And he forgot about himself and his safety, and Allah rewarded him and made him to be khudra. So he entered that spring, became different. You never know, you never know. Everything can be from ordinary ways or extraordinary ways. Aliyah, they were taken from extraordinary ways. Yarab, what Sheikh Nazim used to say, the most important thing was love, love, Muhammad. If you have love, you'll be waiting at the door. If someone who waits at the door of the king, sooner or later that door opens. Either you'll be given something or taken inside. No way to orchestrate it. If they open that door now, no, no one knows when it's going to open. Only were like that. They weren't. going on a schedule. If you read their stories, you think they're crazy. What you're doing. Like the man, there was a man, he came to the court of the king, and he saw the king's daughter. And he was smitten. Was smitten. Now he's in love. He says, I have to marry the princess, take her to, her, to the castle, or take, she take me to the castle. And the king was seeing people. So in the queue comes this guy. He was very polite. Right? What's your situation? I'm going to marry your daughter and you're going to take me to the castle to be with you as your prince. Okay, <laughs> today. The guy he was insisting. What do you do with someone who insists? You make an excuse to keep them busy. He said, okay. time I had a problem Shem said you recite 70,000 times let's go along and you know, then come back and we'll see I was living in Michigan that time I went downstairs 15 minutes or so I came back okay you're done So he told that guy, the king told that guy, all right, you want to marry my daughter, the princess, come to live with me in the castle? Okay, but you have to have a dowry for that. You can't just marry the princess with nothing. Please don't, what are you gonna do? The dowry for my daughter is a very precious, Coral, the pink pearls, the, the under the sea, it comes under the sea. You have to dig down under the sea, empty the ocean until so you see that one, then bring it to me. He said, Take this shovel, take this bucket go to the seaside and empty out the ocean so you can see that uh, coral laying on the sand underneath. Take that, bring it to me for my daughter, that's the dowry, no problem. And that guy was 
what did you do? Crazy with love. I'm on it. Everybody just did. And he goes to the sea. And he wades out into the water. And he takes his bucket and he takes his shovel and begins trying to empty the sea into the pail. And after something, the waves come and close over. He's making no progress whatsoever, obviously. But he won't be uh, discouraged. People come and say, what are you doing? Leave me alone. I'm on a very important assignment for the king. I'm emptying out the ocean to take the coral for Mahar for his daughter. And they left him like that a long time. Meanwhile, the king forgot about him. He was a crazy guy. You go do that. I got rid of him, don't do that, made him busy. And one day, after several years, he was riding along the beach with his men, along the sand, and they saw a strange sight. There's a guy, his clothes are rags, his hair is like, standing in the waves. Who is that guy? Calls the captain of the guard. Oh, check who is that? What's he doing? Who's that strange guy? Standing in the water with a bucket and the shovel. The shovel was also ruined by then. The bucket was nothing but it was just a handle by then. <laughs> in Cyprus, Manashek Nazi used to give us tools like that. Come, we're going to the garden. We're going to dig. What should we dig with? Here's a stick. Here's a shovel with no handle. Here's a rake with no handle. Just like that. Well, we go to the garden to dig. The captain of the guard goes out into the oh, surf and says, Oh, fellow, who are you? What are you doing here? And he says, Don't you remember me? I'm on an important job for the king. I'm going to dig down under here, empty the ocean, and take the rare coral, pearls and corals, to be maher, dowry for the daughter, for the princess. And the captain of the guards came back and said to the king, he's like that. The king, how it made his heart to be affected. We sent him on a useless mission years ago just to get rid of him. And he never left it for one second. He didn't uh, say it can't be. He believed in me what I said and he's doing it all this time. It's enough. He said, tell him, come. He did enough. I'm giving you my daughter. His intention was good, but he didn't look to the, what's the word? The rules of things or the, uh, protocol. yeah, protocol or ways. If uh, Sheikh Hashem used to say, if the Sheikh says like that, you're Treasures are at the bottom of the ocean. You have to dig down with this bucket until you find it. You have to do it. You can't say it's impossible. Well, where do you dig? If he says your rizik is in far east or far west, you have to go and find it there. They had high himma. They didn't balance their doings. So uh, thinking. They went by heart. They went by heart. And Aulia, they were able to do impossible things through heart. It wasn't doable by mind. It wasn't achievable by mind. You read their stories about this one or that one. Imam Ghazali or uh, what's the other one? Ahmed Bedali, Ahmed Rafai. 
each one did something on their way that doesn't fit in mind. They embarked on an impossible task for the love of their shave. Something can't be done. Fly to the moon and get me a moon feathers to come back here. I want it. What are you doing? Trying to fly to the moon. They were like that. People say crazy. No, they weren't crazy. They were trying to open the channels of belief. They were trying to open the powers of belief, not like the powers of mind. To take without studying another kind of knowledge. They believed, and I'll open for them. May Allah grant us. This is the heavy days now coming. Laylatul Barat, the mighty night, the second to Laylatul Qadr, the night when the heavenly decree is made, made known through heavens. Who is going to live? Who is going to die? Who is going to gain? Who is going to lose? Everything is set forth that night in a clear record. And Aulia, they were trying to do their best to meet that night with uh, zikr and praying and fasting and every kind of goodness in the hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send his mercy on that special night. Like later to Qadr. We don't know when it's going to come out or what it's going to be. Only that it's a mighty night. Something, has, there has to be a treasure. Like the pearls and corals under the sea that man was trying to dig up. There has to be a treasure in that night. But we have to dig for it. We have to dig for it. There's some orad to do that night. Inshallah, we'll meet here on Monday. I'll give us power and health to do it. We'll meet after Maghrib, inshallah. Three Yasin supposed to be after Maghrib, but whenever you can get done with the work, we'll meet here. Read three times Yasin and a dua for long life with faith and freedom from, uh, how does it go? Not to be in need for any anyone except Allah. Uh, not to be in need for anything except Allah and safety from difficulties and trials. Then after three Yasins, we make zikr. Uh, after Isha, there are some special prayings to do. The full orad is 100 rakahs with 10 times kulullahu ahad in each one, 1,000 times kulullahu ahad that night. If we can't do that, we can do two rakahs even and sit through our morning in kulullahu. We can make 1,000 kulullahu ahad privately. Whatever you can carry. In my life, I've done all kinds of different ways. Sometimes we were powerful, we did all of it. Sometimes we uh, fell down, we had to resort to the beads. Whatever we're able to do, everyone has the responsibilities. A mighty night. Already by astrology, we saw the was taking a picture of Jupiter and, and Venus touching each other almost so powerful in the sky. The moon coming every day bigger, bigger, bigger to the whole moon. He said that heavy signs was coming. And we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from what's coming on this world. <clears throat> Crazy people are determined to destroy this world and everything in it, to make ashes 
everything. Ram says, have you not seen how the shaitans set upon the people who forgot Allah and made them crazy? Crazy for destroying and killing and hating. And it's like that. No one has any business with that. But they made it to be their life's business. Not holy war they're fighting. No one's fighting for Allah. They're fighting for killing. So their heads are, Shaitan is using their heads for a football. Laughing. So we pray that night and ask Allah to send a rescue to the Ummati Muhammad. Let me go to the fresh wood. Oh, you can start the zikr. Let me go and 